prison of Alcatraz was well renowned as being the toughest prison in the world. From its opening in 1934 to its closure in 1963, it became infamous for its brutal conditions and being impossible to escape from. The life of a prisoner at Alcatraz was tough, to say the least. But unlike other maximum security prisons, Alcatraz had a reputation for its brutality. Many prisoners complained that life there was inhumane, the punishments cruel, and that its conditions were causing many inmates to go insane. Inmates went on record comparing it to hell, remarking that they would have preferred death over staying there any longer. Just off the coast of San Francisco, California, Alcatraz Island was already used as a military fort from 1850, but in late 1933, the United States Department of Justice acquired it, thinking the location perfect for America's worst criminals. After remodeling the existing buildings and constructing guard towers around the island, Alcatraz Federal Penitentiary opened its doors, with the first batch of prisoners arriving on the 11th of August, 1934. Mostly consisting of murderers, bank robbers, and counterfeiters, Alcatraz was intended as a last resort for prisoners who caused trouble and attempted to escape elsewhere and had no real hopes of being rehabilitated. Famous gangsters like Machine Gun Kelly, Mickey Cohen, and Al Capone all served time at Alcatraz, with life at the prison causing Capone's mental health to deteriorate to such an extent that he had to be transferred elsewhere. By its first anniversary, Alcatraz had a population of 242 inmates, and in its 29-year history, 1,576 prisoners passed through its doors. Most of those inmates went on to speak of the horrors within. For the life of an inmate confined at Alcatraz, each day was a struggle. Locked in a tiny cell measuring 9 feet long by 6 feet wide and 7 feet tall, prisoners had little to occupy their minds and were managed by a strict routine. Woken every day at 6.30 a.m., the inmates were sent off for breakfast at 6.55 a.m. And by 7.30 a.m., those who behaved and were permitted to work would start their shifts. Work at Alcatraz could be helping out in the kitchen or with the laundry. After the outbreak of World War II, it also involved sewing military uniforms, cargo nets, and other things for the army. Lunch was at 11.20 a.m., followed by 30 minutes rest in their cells, before heading back to work until 4.15 p.m., then dinner at 4.25 p.m. Meal times in Alcatraz were 20 minutes, and the prisoners were allowed to eat as much as they liked. For all of Alcatraz's faults, the meals served in its dining hall were said to be the best in the entire American prison system, but any food that was wasted would be reported and could result in punishment. Prisoners' basic rights were food, clothing, shelter, and medical attention. Everything else was considered a privilege and could be quickly taken away as punishment. One such rule was the Code of Silence that operated until around 1950, banning prisoners from talking at any point, even during mealtimes. After this rule was lifted, inmates were allowed to talk, but only in a whisper. Having eaten dinner, the inmates would be marched back to their cells where they would be locked in for the night at 4.50 p.m., with lights off at 9.30 p.m. Guards patrolled the cell blocks through the night, giving no privacy. The cells consisted of just a bed, desk, sink, toilet, blanket, and little else. The toilets stood in the open and gave off a terrible stink, while hot water wasn't installed in the cells until 1960. Being locked in their cells for so long, a prisoner's sole source of entertainment came via books and, in later years, playing musical instruments. The real downtime for a prisoner came on weekends and holidays, when they were allowed a maximum of five hours on the recreation yard to exercise, talk freely with one another, and play games like baseball and chess. The strict rules and lack of basic freedoms, even for a prison, were a form of psychological torture and drove many inmates to insanity. One prisoner was beaten so regularly by his fellow inmates and driven insane by the prison itself that he took an ax and cut off his fingers hoping to get a transfer. He was later diagnosed with schizophrenia, likely made worse by life at the world's meanest prison. The guards were quick to punish the slightest infraction, and it was their inhumane punishments that really pushed the prisoners to their limits. Anyone who misbehaved would not be allowed to work, would lose their privileges, and would be sent to solitary confinement, usually for between three and 19 days, depending on the severity of what they had done, although many were confined for far longer. The worst behaved prisoners, or those who did something particularly bad, were sent to the cells in solitary known as the Hole. Consisting of six cells, five of them included nothing but a sink and a toilet, 
while the worst had nothing but a hole in the floor for a toilet. Inmates were stripped naked and tossed inside, and one reported how he received just two meals in his 13 days inside. Outside, Alcatraz had begun to develop a reputation for brutality. In 1939, when one inmate stabbed and killed another, at his trial, the inmate's attorney claimed his client couldn't be held responsible for his actions due to the cruel and unusual punishment he had been subjected to, which included 22 months in solitary after a failed attempt to escape. The judge agreed, and the inmate was given only a few extra years on his sentence. It should come as no surprise that despite its reputation of being impossible to escape from, there are plenty who tried. One of the most famous attempts came in 1946, in what is known as the Battle of Alcatraz. Six inmates conspired to access some guns and make a break for the shore. However, after getting the guns and taking some guards hostage, their initial plan fell through and they attempted to shoot their way out instead. They started by shooting their hostages, and soon Marines were called to suppress them. Three of the six surrendered, realizing their chances of escape were zero but the remaining three fought on for almost two days before they were killed. As well as the three prisoners, two guards were killed and 14 others injured. But the most famous and perhaps the only successful escape attempt came on the 11th of June, 1962. Three inmates used various tools to dig and widen the ventilation shaft in their cells. It took six months, but once wide enough, they climbed through and dropped into an unguarded area below where they began constructing a makeshift rubber raft. They had already crafted papier-mâché heads, which they placed in their beds so patrolling guards would not think them missing. Late in the evening, they embarked on their raft and made for an island a few miles away. Their escape was not discovered until the next morning when their decoys and tunnels were found. A massive manhunt followed, but the men or their bodies were never found. In total, 36 prisoners attempted to escape from Alcatraz, with 23 caught and the remainder shot and killed, drowned, or missing and presumed dead. Following various investigations after the 1962 escape, on the 21st of March 1963, Alcatraz Federal Penitentiary was closed. The main reason was the cost of its upkeep. Alcatraz was by far the most expensive prison in America, with the maintenance of the island running into the millions, and the upkeep of the prisoners more than three times that of most other prisons in the country. It remained a relic off the coast of San Francisco for years until it reopened to the public as a museum. Now you can walk the empty halls of Alcatraz, see the tiny cells where so many prisoners lived, and get just a small idea of the kind of suffering that took place. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more. If you enjoyed this video and don't leave a like, maybe you deserve a spell in Alcatraz yourself.